Hello everyone, welcome to the fifth and final installment of my series of revision videos. The first thing to say is that this video is going to be about revision planning. So if you're looking for videos on actually how to revise, you need to go back to our YouTube channel, the Crown Hills YouTube channel, to find those relevant videos which are linked to the different year groups as well. So things like look, cover, write, check was something that we did with year sevens, etc. So in this video, we're just going to be looking at revision planning, not actually how to revise. And to help you with that, you will need two things. So in a moment, we're going to pause and allow you to get those things if you've not got them already. But the two things that you need in order to successfully revision plan are, firstly, you will need a list of some sort of all of your subjects and all of the topics within your subjects. Now, in year 11, we are going to give you one of these booklets, which will be fully complete with all of the subjects that you study, with all of the topics within them. If you're preparing for your mock exams, we aren't going to give you one of these because what we don't want to do is we don't want to confuse you with the whole course content. So instead what you will need to bring back with you is a list of things that you know you're being tested on in your mock exams. So for example, you might only be doing a paper rather than both papers for English language, for example. So just to make sure in a few moments that you come back with the subjects that you're being examined in for your mock exams, if that's what you're preparing for now to revise, and also the topics within that subject. So that's the first thing that you need, basically a list of things that you need to cover. And the other thing that you need to cover and have with you is some sort of a diary, some sort of a planner. Now what we have done, whether it's for your mock exams or for your real exams closer to May and June if you're in year 11, we've given you one of these booklets which have the diary entries in. You might have your own versions which might be um, as an actual diary. Some of you I know prefer to even work uh, on the computer and might even have an Excel spreadsheet to organise your time. Either way, what we're going to do now is we're going to pause to give you the chance to bring two things back. One of them is a subject and topic list to make sure you're covering everything that you need to cover and the second thing is a diary or a planner of some description. I'll see you shortly. Hello and welcome back. So I'm hoping that you now have what I've asked you to get hold of. It might not necessarily be this particular booklet, but it could be a version of it. It could be revision guides, which have got all of your subjects with all of your topics inside of that. That's one thing that you need, as well as something that allows you to plan your revision itself, like a diary, like a planner, or as I said before in the previous segment, maybe something that you're using online. Okay, let's start. So, let's imagine that for my mock exams, which is the example that we're using for illustration purposes in this video, let's imagine for my mock exams that I have to revise science, okay? So I get my revision guide or I get my topic lists from my subject lists out and the first thing I do is I take a look at that and I need to know, first of all, what paper is it that I'm actually doing for my mocks. Obviously for the real exams it'll be all of the papers. So I know because I've checked and I've spoken to my science teacher that one of the things I'm doing is biology paper one of combined science. So I know exactly what I'm doing for my mock exams. What I do then is I look at the uh, topics themselves within the subject and what I begin to do is I start rag rating. So by rag rating I mean um, colour code the different topics, red, amber, green. Red means you don't get it, amber means you sort of get it but could do with some more help maybe, and green means that you get it fully and you probably only need to do a little bit of revision on that just to make sure you've not forgotten anything. So what I will do, as you can see here, I'm just going to go through this. Um, this is a pink highlighter, obviously I'm trying to get it as close to red as possible. So I've rag rated that as red because I'm not very good. I know this in my heart of hearts at cell structure and transport. So that's for me red. But actually I'm okay at cell division. So I'm going to highlight cell division B2. And I'm also, I think, quite good at organisation and the digestive system. But I don't think I'm so good that I could yet say that I'm green. However, I know that I am really, really good at doing organising animals and plants. 
so I'm going to um, colour code that green and rag rate it green there. And obviously, uh, I'm going to stop there for now, but obviously you would go through this and you do that for each and every um, topic. So what I then do with that information is I now need to plot that onto my revision planner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my planner. Um, all of year 11, whether this is for your mock exams or for your real exams, are going to get something like this to help you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start putting in um, where I can actually revise. And my starting point is I need to look at the week. Let's imagine this is going to be during a holiday, so a half-term holiday break. Let's imagine that this is my week and what I need to do first of all is before I even start to put these things in there, I need to think about well what are my commitments like? And it's important at this stage as well that you are as realistic as you possibly can be because what you don't want to be doing is you don't want to be spending all of your time writing and rewriting revision plans. So you need to be honest with yourself. So for example, if you know that in the Saturday of the half term holiday that actually you have a family wedding to go to, then you know that there's no way you're going to be able to do any revision on Saturday. And that's fine, these things happen. You might also, for example, which is a good thing, you might have some social commitments. So for example, on the Monday of the holiday, you might say in the um, hour between three and four o'clock, you might actually be meeting up with your friends in order to you know, maybe play a game of football. You might still have, for example, some commitments, mosque commitments, whatever it might be uh, throughout that time too. And what you need to do, you need to get rid of all of those times and eliminate them from your planner. Once you've done that, you're left with the space that's left. And then at that stage, you need to start putting in your red, amber and green topics into this plan. Now, obviously, we'd be hoping that you wouldn't just be confining all of your revision just to one week, because actually you should be revising over the course of a series of weeks. And you will be doing that when you're definitely doing your real exams in May and June if you're in year 11. So... What are the implications of this being read? I would say, as a general rule, what you should be doing is saying to yourself, if something's read, then you probably need to be encountering and re-encountering that knowledge at least three times. So what I would do here is I would say, you know what, I'm going to do some B1 here, and note that I'm using pencil, because this will get quite messy, and you may have to do some, uh, you know, rearranging on it as well. So use a pencil because that way you can rub things out easily rather than having to start from scratch each time. So I'm going to put B1 in there and I know because it's red for me I need to look at it again and again. I need to leave some space in between the time I first did it to when I'm actually revising. So I'm going to put B1 in there and then I'm going to um, leave it a day and I'm going to put B1 in there. But I also need to introduce another little bit of a gap of time. So I might leave it, instead of one day, I might leave two days. So actually, I might then put it into this slot here, B1 there. So I'm going to be looking at B1 here, here, and here. Three times because I've colour-coded that red. Obviously, the more times you look at it, the easier you will find it to remember that knowledge. And then I'd repeat that for B2, but with B2... Um, I only need to look at that a couple of times, so I might put B2 in there, and I might put B2 in there, leaving a little bit of a space between me first revising it and then looking at it again. And with B4, I might say to myself, well, I only need to um, do that once, it's green for me, so I might even leave that as late as possible, just check that I have got it, and I might put that there on the Sunday before, let's imagine, my Monday exam on biology paper one. So that in principle is how you do your revision planner. Remember within each of these hour slots you shouldn't be revising solidly for one hour so instead what you should be doing is saying to yourself well I'll do B1 for maybe 15 to 20 minutes and then you can either keep doing biology, keep doing science or you can mix it up. So you might then introduce for example um, some chemistry or some physics if you're keeping the science theme or if you want to you can keep the biology theme going and actually have your B2 here and then your B3 or alternatively you could mix it really up and then say I'll do some English here as well as some history for example it doesn't matter what but remember you're not revising solidly for one hour you're breaking it up into little chunks the best students will also 
not just write down B1, but they'll also write down how they're going to revise it. So for example, you might choose to write down the look, cover, write, check methodology there as a little bit of a reminder to yourself about how you're going to do it. You might use flashcards for B2, so you might just do a little code there, FC, for flashcards to remind you to make sure that when you're doing that session, you're going to be using flashcards. So try to marry up what you're doing with also how you're doing that revision. A couple of final things from me in terms of revision planning here. Remember, you're not just planning to learn knowledge in terms of facts. You should also be learning to do uh, what we call procedural knowledge. So are you also spending some time on exam technique? Do you know how many minutes you need to spend on each question, if you can predict that? Do you know what command words in exams mean, such as um, evaluate, and how that means one thing in science, but something else different in religious studies, for example? So are you actually building in time to do some procedural um, practice of exam papers as well. You should be building that into this as well, not just learning facts. It's no good learning lots of facts without being able to put them into the way that an examiner is going to be able to mark that. So procedures and practice are also really, really important. And you might find yourself doing more of practice in, for example, a subject like maths, rather than uh, in a subject where you might have to learn lots of facts first before you can do any practice. We're going to stop there with just one final reminder to say, just because you've got a revision planner that takes you from 10 o'clock at night to 9 o'clock at night, remember, doesn't mean you should be revising every single waking hour. Please do look after yourselves in terms of your health and well-being. And as I say, make sure that you are blocking out time for the things that you need to be doing so that you're happy and healthy because as students, you're going to be able to revise better if you're eating well, sleeping well, resting and relaxing in between time. Thank you so much for listening to this video. If you do have any questions, and obviously you can speak to a member of staff in school who can help you potentially to either write a revision plan or answer any questions that you have about how we construct them. Thank you.